Hi, everybody, we're live. Thank you for joining the broadcast. I'm Kelsey Nelson. This is six reasons that you should self-publish your book and six reason, reasons you should not self-publish your book. I would like to give a special welcome to everyone who is watching, who is a part of my online but to self-publish your first book. Uh, we're just kicking off classes today. I'm very excited to have you guys on. Uh, and right after uh, we go through these six reasons and the other six reasons, uh, you will be getting an email from me with three bonuses that I will tell you about at the end of the video. If you aren't in the class yet, you can still join the class. There's a link on the bottom. I'll tell you about it again at the end. But let's, let's get right into this. Um, I am on my boat today, which is one of the perks of lifestyle. So all should go well. Um, however, it is an old wooden boat, bilge pump to kick in, which means I am not sinking. Yay. Um, and we might see a boat cat, hopefully, without a prize for us. Um, but here we go. So the very first reason that you might want to self-publish your book Control should self-publish your book if you would like to have control over the final product. And this comes in play in a lot of ways. Yes, in the actual content and the editing. I highly recommend you hire an editor if you self-publish and you get feedback. But ultimately, you are the final editor. You get to choose if you're going to take the feedback or not, book format or not. It's all up to you. The design, do you have a certain aesthetic that you would like, a certain quality level? You are going to be the one that champions that. Cover design is a huge one for authors. Publish, you again have the final say in cover design. Uh, and not only that, once your book is out, you also have a lot of control promotions and uh, what distribution channels that you're going to send it out. If you are traditionally publishing, you might not be able to get to do something such as go speak at a conference and give everyone who attends the conference a free copy of your book. But if you are self-published, then that is no problem at all. You have the control. Next reason, reason number two, is curiosity and capability. Publishing is a good idea for you if you want to explore the new technologies, the tools, the channels. If that sounds very exciting to you, if you want to find out uh, more ways that you can either reach readers, that you can produce a book, then self-publishing will be thrilling. Uh, the technologies have improved so much that you do not need to be an expert designer. You do not need to have a marketing degree. I don't even know that those are valuable anymore. Uh, you do not uh, need to have bookstores already that you call individually and set it up. The, the internet and all of these wonderful new developments in technology have really democratized the whole system. So if you would like to learn about how you can distribute your book or produce a better book. All that information and the tools are out there for you. Now, you don't have to do it all yourself. You can self-publish with the help of others that you enlist or other services or other companies. Uh, but you will still need to be able to go find those companies. And when they're giving you recommendations, if you are able to educate yourself different options out there, you will be better able to evaluate whether these are good ideas for you or not. Uh, reason number three is time. Self-publishing is a good idea for you if you would rather put out your book sooner than later. With, well, I've seen people put up a book in a matter of hours, which is insane, and I'm not, I don't recommend that. Do you have your manuscript and you would like to get it edited, get a cover design, and get it up in a couple weeks? Tight deadline, but you could definitely do it. 
if your book was ready to go now uh, and you are self-publishing, now is that little button. And then 12 hours later, your book is on the largest distribution system that we have. Uh, with a traditional publisher, years. You could have your manuscript totally done, and now you've got to go look for an agent. Now you've got your agent has to query different publishers. Now you, the publishers have to think about it. Now the publishers need to put it in their editorial catalog, and this is great. We want it, but we already have three books coming out this season that are similar, so we're going to put it to next year. Again, you don't have the control, and the timelines can be very long because it's not just your timeline. It's their timeline as well. Sometimes they can get it out pretty fast, uh, but usually you're looking at a much longer timeline if you go the traditional route. Uh, number four is access. Self-publishing idea if you would like to sidestep the gatekeepers. Now we know who the gatekeepers are. We know that there's a gazillion and 40 uh, want to be authors, uh, and then there's only a very finite amount of publishers and agents out there to help make that happen on your behalf. And while I love traditional publishing as well, I also have a press, yay for traditional publishing. There's simply not enough room and there's not enough space for all of us, even if our books are good, if we want to go that route. I have a little story to tell you. Uh, when I was in my Master's of Publishing Arts program, I got to work with Red Hen Press, which is a great press, literary, down in California. And they're one of the few indie presses out there that are long running and reliable and who are publishing uh, brand new debut literary authors. This is a very rare thing to be doing. Me sit down and go through their slush pile. And they said, Kelsey, you want to be a writer? This will be good for you. So I sat down and I went through the first packet. And um, it was a professor of writing who had published three other books with other small presses. He'd won a certain amount of awards. He was doing pretty well with his awards. And he had this new manuscript. It was on a topic that was um, that was current. Uh, it was fiction. It was a good match for the press. I thought, okay, this is great. And I said, okay, do I hand this one up? Do I hand this to the editor to make sure that she sees it? And I got a laugh. And I was told, no. Um, this is maybe a three out of their five level system. You know, uh, uh, one um, would be totally not a fit, totally bad book, totally bad presentation. And they don't even get a letter. They get like a slip of paper mailed back. Thank you. You know, polite, of course. Two might be a half slip of paper that says, okay, thank you. Um, a, a three might be that they get a letter. The, the four might be um, that someone scrawls a note on there that says, um, you know, we liked this, but it's not available right now. And the, the highest level would be more of a note like, oh, we really wish we could publish this, but we simply don't have the uh, room in our schedule. And I was told to look at the stack of submissions. There were about a thousand at that time um, and think that every single one of them is a no unless I could come up with an extraordinary reason why they had to publish this book and why this author was um, a great match and going to be a great promotion partner. I was thinking, if this professor, who's already published three times and won awards, is a three, I'm like a negative eight. And it was very, very saddening. But when you think of a press that gets maybe 30,000, I don't even know, submissions a year and only publishes 20 books, uh, you better believe that a lot of really, really good books are not going to be picked by that publisher. Now you can go to the next publisher, but again, you're running into the same thing. It's not that the books are bad. It's not that the author wouldn't do a wonderful job. It's simply that they don't have enough capacity to publish all those great books. So um, 
what is wonderful about self-publishing is you don't have to try to cram yourself through that little narrow slot. You can go around. The readers are still out there. The distribution is still out there. Um, you can create a beautiful book and you don't need to sit in slush piles for years and years and years and years. And it doesn't have to mean that your book wasn't absolutely fabulous. It means you're going to need some help and to do a little learning. Uh, but you can skip right ahead and go right out to the readers directly. Uh, number five is tradition. Self-publishing is a very good idea. If you want to be a part of a grand tradition of independent, bohemian, and resourceful authors. We may have heard of, you know, some of the current successes. You may have heard about Amanda Hawking or Hugh Howey with the with the Wool series. Yeah, we know about those self-published authors. But did you know other authors like Stephen King, uh, James Redfield, who wrote The Celestine Prophecy, Beatrix Potter, Nicholas Sparks? All of these authors have also self-published. And they weren't the first self-publishing. We can go back. Um, and I, oh, James Joyce. Um, I, I wrote down a bunch because I knew I wouldn't remember them all. Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, Mark Twain, Gertrude Stein, uh, Deepak Chopra. All of these authors have self-published either exclusively or career. So self-publishing is a wonderful tradition to be a part of that uh, really amazing authors, some of the best authors out there that we admire and that we look to and that we hold up as the, the pinnacle of what an author, an author should be. Those are folks that have self-published and that is the club that you would be joining. Now, the last reason uh, to self-publish is number six, rewards. Self-publishing is a good idea if you would like to reap the And by riches, okay, sure. Sometimes that could be actual money, riches. Uh, when it's the revenue, all of the royalties come to you unless you're going through a service that collects some of them or you have a deal where you split them with your editor but all of the royalties uh, now you've probably heard that for most self-published authors uh, including most of you on here you will earn less than five hundred dollars in royalties for your book that's especially if you think you might spend 2000 creating it 3000 4000 hmm um that could be quite a lot um so, but uh, you know most authors earn less than $500 in royalties um, more than 90% of self published authors are satisfied with the experience there's a lot of reasons for this cuz even if you think that you know money is 80% why you want to once you're both there you use all these other wonderful things that come through um actually gets out people read your book that you don't know and they leave a review and while that not, might not seem like a good like a very big deal when it actually happens to you it's huge um especially if they connect with it there's the completion i'm sure there's so many of you on here that have said that you're going to publish, that you're going to self-publish, and it's been hanging over you for years. Well, that feeling of getting it done and pointing at that really big, difficult, wonderful thing that you did can never be taken away. It's done. It's great. Awards, yes, great. Um, you get to be an author, not just a writer. Although I believe that if you're in the process, you are still an author because it's a journey. It's not a long time uh, and then when you think back to the money part even though you may not make very much you might make a great deal in something else that is related to it if it's non to business or customers an authority builder that allows you to uh, advance your career or get speaking uh, it can do things even if you're fiction now you can teach classes about 
uh, your craft or about publishing or um, about how you can use craft the writing in other areas you're teaching workshops on how to use poetry to heal um, wonderful amazing things happen once you put your work out into the world and I love this question that just came through um, it says a publishing company yes um, like I said I love publishing I love uh, independent publishing hybrid publishing traditional publishing I greatly believe that um, there's a lot of ways out there. And it's funny because even though now I'm quote, quote, a publishing company, I'm still me. So for me, it's indie. So all of these things that I'm saying apply to me and the other small presses, I'll be the small presses. I want the control. I want to have the timing. I want to, I really, I really care about about um, I want the the access I love the technologies so it's very funny that a, a lot of indie publishing uh, uh, and all of these things apply we just also bring in other authors work and as much as I love self-publishing and all the others I will tell you that when I I do not think it is a good idea. In fact, when I think you should run screaming from self-publishing, you will be sad and disappointed and angry. And here's some of those times or some of those reasons. Um, number one, do not, if you cannot or will not, invest time, money, and attention. Say so you have now, if you don't have a lot of money, but you can invest time and attention, great. Uh, if you don't have any time, but you can give it some money, um, then you can probably still get it done. But you need to have at least a couple of those. Um, if you are not at all interested in the publishing process, off, uh, then your book is going to, no one is going to care about your project as much. And even if you pay for services, it will be out there and it might get done, but you're not going to get as many rewards from it on all of those different levels. Um, and the same with, um, with money. If you are refusing to put any money into it, um, again, you're going to be a little disappointed because your book won't have a great editor. Uh, it might not have a good design. It might, if that's what you do. Um, it's, your book is going to have a really hard time standing on its own and pleasing readers. It's possible to be a very disappointing experience. Uh, reason number two, not self-publish if you have your heart set on a publisher. If you have been dreaming since you were a five-year-old and you first wrote your story that, uh, I don't know, Viking or someone was going to publish your book, before you self-publish, get an agent. Try to get that dream publisher. Go that route. Spend that time. Follow that dream. If that is your specific dream, do it. Um, at least try uh, and spend. You know, spend a year. Maybe spend three years. Depends on how important this is to you. Know that what you really, really, really want is a traditional publisher or a particular publisher. Then go after it. Do not self-publish because even if it goes well you may still have that sad little feeling. So go try that first. Um, number three, do not self-publish if you are holding on to outdated prejudices against self-publishing. We've all heard of vanity presses. Uh, we have probably seen books that were put up with very poor quality. Uh, and we, sometimes the authors, might be looked down on if they say that their book was self-published. Someone says, oh, who published your book? Well, I did. Uh, and if you get any kind of feeling of shame about that, um, mm, nope, uh, self-publishing is not for you. Uh, uh, those feelings are very out um, Publish Self-publishing, um, it has improved so much. And as long as you're willing to work on your craft and invest in a great book, 
your book, no one would know that it was self-published as compared to some of these books that have $100,000 uh, budgets behind them. Um, so if you're holding on to those old feelings about self-publishing, don't do it. It's outdated and you need to get with the times. Uh, number four, do not self-publish if your book or your writing isn't ready. And what I mean by that is just because now it's really easy to put out a book for the mechanics of it and the going down the list and getting it all done and getting it over on it and putting it out there, just because you can do it doesn't mean that that book is ready. Uh, it can be very disappointing if you rush through the process, if your book really needed a rewrite and you put it out there, now it's out there, you can do new editions, but uh, you're getting to some of those bad feelings that people have about self-publishing. Another thing is that if you are looking to be an author in the literary craft tradition, take some time, or in any tradition really, but take some time to develop your skills. Uh, good enough is good enough, but is that really what you want to put out there in the world? I made this mistake uh, when I was in college and thought I was brilliant, of course, with my, you know, edgy short stories and wanted to stick them out there right away. Years later, realizing how young uh, my writing was and how much further it had to go. Uh, and a lot of writers um, on their craft and put it out there and maybe the book does okay um, but it doesn't do great and they've had the experience and it's kind of done check mark move on to the next thing uh, and they've missed the opportunity for the struggle and for the time uh, if it takes 10 years to develop your craft 20 years what if you couldn't publish for 20 years? What if you had to spend 20 years working on your craft before it got to the point uh, where you could actually reach your pinnacle? I really want you to reach your pinnacle perfection. Um, let's get these things out there, but definitely be as honest and open-eyed as you can about where your skills are and perhaps go, you know, hire a editor to get um, a manuscript review put it out there with beta readers first go take a spend your money on a writing course and uh, get the instructor feedback and not just your friends and your writing group is great but they're generally supportive uh, put your work out into the world in other ways first and really get that valuable feedback you want the struggle you want the time to improve your craft so don't self-publish if your writing or your book is not ready self-publishing will be there for you when you are ready uh reason number five so oh there's my bilge pump i don't know if you guys can hear it or not but my boat is currently not sinking because the bilge pump is pumping the water out yay floating okay <laughs> um number five um, do not self-publish if you have unrealistic expectations of outcome. And what I mean by this is that if you are expecting to become a bestseller, if you are expecting maybe not a bestseller, but you're at least going to live off of it, right? Um, if you are not willing to put in what it takes in order to reach those really, really big goals, again, you're going to be hugely disappointed. Uh, lightning does strike, it happens, um, it's not going to happen to you. Uh, it, if you are going to have success, it is going to be not just the lightning, um, it will be because you put in the time and you put in the resources and you did the work. And uh, some, some folks have a, um, a view where they've seen other books become really popular and they think, well, if I do that little book, if my book is surely that good, so if it is popular is that, then I have failed. Well, there's a huge range of outcomes and possibilities. And uh, what we often can't see are those authors who we think um, just it hit, lightning struck, and they have this huge hit, have been working so hard for many years. Uh, Hugh Howey, who uh, is one of the most successful self-publishing 
self-published authors I know now, millions of dollars. I, I'm not even sure what it's worth anymore, but his boat's much better than mine. Um, uh, he spent years putting out his, his book as a series and people were able to read it for free uh, for many years before he was able to monetize it and eventually self-publish and eventually have success and eventually negotiate additional publishing deals. So um, that if that's your goal and that's your expectation, hooray. But just remember the other side of that, there's got to be an input that balances that amazing output in either time or luck or resources. Um, and if this is a business for you, you wouldn't start a business, expect that you wouldn't spend anything on your business and be making $100,000 a year. Be spending money on advertising. You would be spending money on um, experts. Um, you would have product development money. So if your expectation is a business, remember that you're going to have to put in a business's worth of resources to get that out of there. Um, and my last reason is that you should not self-publish if you are more comfortable living with the imagined possibilities of grand success rather than risking the disappointment of it not going. Now, before you push publish, before you actually do that, you know that there's infinite possibility. You know that you win the booker and that your book could be a bestseller. You know this. And until you hit self-publish, or excuse me, until you hit that publish button, that truth may always exist somewhere in the universe, sort of. Uh, and it feels good sometimes to hold that out there so that um, we don't have to find out that that's not quite true. And we hate it when our failures or our shortcomings stop us. But here's the thing. Uh, it's not, what's that quote? It's not the, it's the fear of failure that stops us more than anything else. Um, if you are afraid that you aren't going to appeal to readers, or you're not going to know how to market, so you're too afraid to start because you're afraid that that might happen in the future, you've just made that the reality. It's already stopping you. It's already stopping you. And yet you're giving it all this power. If you think that maybe your book won't be a bestseller or maybe you won't even make your money back, um, well, it's already one. It's already st it's already stopping you if you, you if you allow those fears and those concerns um, to prevent you from and taking those steps right now. Um, I like to think that you're starting at nothing, so anything only going to improve in your. And there's so many shots at this. You do not have one book. You have many books in you. Believe it or not. Um, how to do marketing again and again and again. Um, you get to fail again and again and again. You can relaunch your book. You can rewrite your book. You can do all of these wonderful things. So, you know, give up on holding on to that that concept of um, and it'll be wonderful. And if I'm not, I'm too afraid to find out I'm a bad writer, or I'm too afraid to find out that my book won't sell. Because guess what? Some people will think you're a bad reader. Some people will not buy your book. And you'll put it out there. You'll get better. You'll learn how to become a better writer. You'll find the people that love your stuff. You'll learn how to sell. You'll learn. Uh, it, it'll be a wonderful journey. Uh, so, um, coming up about my publishing company. We're not going to die, but, um, but um, how do you find help? How do you, on um, your own, what resources are available? What should you be paying for? Uh, and what is um, kind of a waste of money? What is a smart use of your money, as we all do, really? Um, uh, we're going to have to go through the course. Uh, all these lessons. This class, the how to self-publish your first book, goes through the nuts and bolts of getting it out there, getting um, getting it designed, uh, getting it into distribution, um, pricing, and then it's on book marketing and your launch. The sign up is under the video, either on the page or if you're watching on Google Hang 
checking out some of our YouTube comments. Um, and today, which is September 8th, if you join the class before midnight, you'll save 50 bucks, which is great. And if you that are already in the class, um, I said that I had some bonuses for you, and you'll get an email from me momentarily. And uh, you bonuses that I have for you today, there's more. You guys don't even know how many I've got lined up for you. But um, the first one is the copy of Guy Kawasaki's Ape, um, author, publisher, entrepreneur, how to self-publish a book. I know many of you have it. It's still good, and I tell you which chapters to read. Uh, you will also get a one-month pass um, to access my other class, uh, Big World Audience, which will help you when you're done um, publishing your book, reaching that audience no matter where they are, and getting your readers. Hallelujah. This is that you will get the little guide, uh, 10 Clever Ways to Market Your Book Before You Publish. So you can hear the things that you you can be doing right now uh, to start marketing your book and yourself even before your book even exists. So for joining, I hope that you heard something interesting. I'd love to read your comments, or you can send me an email at contact at kelsey.com. And best of luck with all of your future publishing endeavors.